Before you can display a drop down list of items, you need your list ready to go. In column A, I've got five sample colors I'm gonna use for this demonstration. In the yellow cell, I'm gonna create the drop down list. First up, go to the data tab, find the data validation tool. Now for many of you, you'll have the words data validation written here, but it's the icon with the green tick and the red symbol. This displays a dialogue with three tabs in it. The first one called settings is the only one you have to complete. So under allow, choose list. And in the source box, first of all, I'm just gonna choose A1 to A5. This is the range of cells that contains my list of valid values. And that's all I've gotta do, click okay. I now have a working drop-down list. So I can choose any item from the list and I can change it to any other item anytime I like. Now, if you're working with a lot of lists, or you wanna use this same list in lots of different places, it's worthwhile naming the list. So to do that, you simply select the cells that you wanna use, go to your name box here and give it a name. I'm calling this one color. Now, when you name your cells or name your ranges, you cannot use spaces, okay? So it doesn't accept anything with spaces in. So either get rid of the spaces by putting the words next to each other or separate your words with underscores. Once you're done, press enter to lock it in. And again, if you don't press enter, it won't register the name. You then won't be able to use it. I'm gonna go back to my yellow cell, then click the data validation tool once again. And this time in the source, I'm gonna wipe out what's there and press F3. Now F3 gives me a list of anything that's been named. And color is one of those items, as you can see. I'm gonna choose that and click okay. And what it says in source is equals color. In other words, the range of cells called color, that contains the list of valid values for this particular drop-down cell. Again, I'm gonna click okay. And just like before, it works exactly the same but now I'm referring to a named range instead of a fixed range. Let me just delete this cell here so it's blank again. Now quite often in a table, you want to validate every cell in a particular column using the same drop-down items. So maybe for example, you've got some address information and one of the columns in your table is state. Now the list of states is gonna be a fixed list that you want to make available to every cell in that column. So once you've done one, you can auto fill down and apart from any formatting, any validation that's behind it also gets copied down. So each of these cells here, you'll notice has a drop down arrow. And when you click on that, you get the same list of items. So it's a very quick process. Now, when you select an item off the drop down list, you cannot go wrong. But if you type in something that's not on the list, you'll get an error. And initially it just gives you some generic text, a generic explanation with a retry or cancel button. In other words, it tells you you've made a mistake and the only two choices you have are to either fix that mistake or forget about it. Now this, message can be customized, you can make it more friendly. And the way you do that is like this. So let me cancel this. I'm gonna select all these yellow cells now because I want the change to apply to all of these. I'll then go back to data validation. And this time on the error alert tab, first of all, there's three styles I can choose from. So there's stop, which is what you just saw, it gives you this symbol here, and it says retry or cancel. The next option says warning, so it gives you the yellow warning triangle. And this will give you the same error message, but it will say yes, no, or cancel buttons. And the last one there, which is the least severe, it's the most tolerant, is called information. So again, a blue information symbol, but this time it gives you an OK or cancel button. So let me just show you information as a comparison. Now, title and error message should describe what the problem is. So title for this one will be something like color. And the error message would say something like, that color is not on the list, please try again. So with all this information populated, click OK. And now if I try putting an invalid entry in, it lets me know, in less severe language, but it gives me the error message that I defined and notice the difference in the buttons as well, okay or cancel. Now normally at this point you'll cancel and then put a correct entry in there, but sometimes people have given you some data and you're not sure what the correct information should be. So in those situations, you might actually wanna let it go through and then deal with it later. So if I was to click okay here, I've now got an invalid entry in myself. No harm done though, because at any stage, you can go to the data validation icon, click the drop down arrow, and there's an option here called circle invalid data. And anything that doesn't match your criteria, which in this case is the drop down list, will get circled in red. And you can't miss that. Now it's not permanent, they will disappear after a while. You can also turn them off manually. But the idea is that anything that doesn't meet your conditions is instantly identified. Now at some stage, you'll probably wanna modify your list. You might need to add new stuff to it, remove stuff from it, or maybe change or update some of the items. So let's come down the bottom here and put another color. And if we now go back to our drop down list and have a look, you'll notice that the yellow I've just added isn't part of the list. And that's because the cell that I put yellow into is outside of the original range that was either named or selected. So this is a problem because 
At some stage, if this happens, the only way to fix this is to go to your formulas tab, go to your name manager, find the color range here, and down the bottom where it says refers to this range, update the range here. So in this case, that would be A6 instead of A5. So let's just uh, tick that there, click close here, and we should now have a full list of those six colors. But obviously having to do that every single time, that's a real nuisance. You're not sure when somebody else might have added something, or you know, it's just very hard to manage. So the better way to go is to use the formatted table feature within Excel. So to do this, you can either come to any cell in this table and press Control T, that's the keyboard shortcut, or back on the Home tab, you can press the Format as Table icon about halfway across here. Now this gives you the gallery, and if you just choose any design, what happens is it asks you, does your table have headers? Now in this case, there's no column heading, it's just a list of values, so I would leave it unticked and click OK. What happens is it adds one for me. Okay, now if you'd have said, yes, I do have one, it would have used it. Now the column one, as it's labeled here, I can just rename to anything I like. It's a color in this case. And you'll notice the banding all the way down. And down in the bottom right corner, the little marker to indicate the current boundary of the table. Now if we look over here, it's still looking at the same six colors. It doesn't include the heading, just the items underneath the heading. But now, if I add a new color, and then go back to my drop down list, straight away, the new color is included. So I don't have to go back to that formulas tab, the name manager, and extend the range every time, which is a real nuisance. You'll notice the little marker on the bottom right corner of the table has moved down. And any other colors I add, the little marker moves down automatically. So whenever you go back to your drop down cells, they always include the full list. If I was to delete an item from this table, same deal, it would shorten the list over here. Now one last thing I would say, just to make your management of lists easy, because once you get into it, you tend to generate quite a lot of lists for different things. So it's a good idea to actually have a separate sheet down the bottom called lists or something similar, and just have all of your list information on the one sheet. When you're not using it, you can always right click a sheet tab and choose hide, and that way it's hidden from view. So people can't inadvertently change it, or in some cases, deliberately change it. In the case of disgruntled employees, they might even sabotage it, who knows? Now you, as the designer, know it's there, so anytime you need to make a change, you can always right click any sheet tab that is still open, and unhide, well let me first hide it, then I'll right click it again and I'll choose unhide. And this will show you a list of any other sheets that are hidden. You choose the one you want to unhide and click OK. It then gets unhidden and redisplayed. You can make your changes. And again, once you're done, you can hide the sheet again afterwards. So that's how to do single level drop down lists. Now there are occasions where you need to do multi level or dependent drop down lists. Now that adds a bit more complexity to it, but I'm going to include a link in the description to another video where I cover how to do that.